Hello friends, welcome to Pioneer of Success. We are adding another video in the Chemical Species Transport playlist. In this video, we will be talking about diffusion process taking an axisymmetric geometry. We have already uploaded few videos on axisymmetric geometries. I will be putting those videos in the description box so that you can have a cross watch. So let us proceed with today's topic. So we will be going ahead with this. So click on model wizard and then I click on 2D axisymmetric because I am modeling taking an axisymmetric geometry. Then I will be taking transport of diluted species which is already available in my recently used physics. So I am just double clicking here. Once I double click here, it will be coming to this physics interface. Then I go to study, I will be solving an unsteady phenomenon and that's why I will be taking time dependent option. So I can double click on time dependent and it will be going to this physics interface and I will be getting the ultimate console window. Now what I need to do initially, I need to define my length scale of geometry. So I will be working in centimeter length scale. So I, I am putting centimeter here and then just right clicking on and taking a rectangle or a square, whatever. So keep, I keep it as one centimeter in all the ends. Then click on bell selected. So you can see I have already created a particular geometry and now what I have to do is I go to material and click on add material from library and I will be putting water in the medium so water yeah it should be liquid so I am taking water so water is already selected so you already know whenever it is showing in blue that means the selection is properly done. So I have created my geometry. I have selected the material in my solution space. Now going to transport of diluted species. As you all know, my first task would be looking into the equation which I have I am going to solve in this particular physics. So you can see this is nothing but a chemical species transport equation. I am again telling you the meaning of all the terms. So the first term is the unsteady state term and the second term is the molecular diffusion or you can say this is coming from the fixed law. So divergence of the flux is taken here as a second term and you know the flux is equal to negative d on gradient multiplied by gradient of c. So we all know if there is a gradient of concentration, if there is a gradient of temperature, then whether it is temperature or heat, it basically flows. So to move for the molecular diffusion process to occur, whether it's heat or it is concentration, there should be a gradient. And this is coming, I mean, uh, this term actually taking care of this particular gradient. And as you know, this particular term is convective term because you have a u vector which is dot product with the gradient of concentration. So these are the convective terms. If you have any reaction in your system, then you can include this ri option. So by default, there is no ri, but you have the liberty to choose this reaction by right clicking here and clicking on the reactions. So you can see there is one option reaction but as we are only working with diffusion for this particular video I will not be taking this reaction term here but just to make you understand the equation I showed you where from you can put the reaction term. Now what I do is I am supposing that there will be certain concentration kept at the bottom and at the top we'll be keeping zero concentration of certain solute say an arbitrary solute and we want to see how exactly the solute from this bottom plane 
try to go to the top plane top plane by diffusion process so for that what i need to do i need to right click on transport i need to choose dirichlet boundary condition so here concentration is can be taken as a dirichlet boundary condition so i click on concentration i have to define the boundary yeah here is the boundary and you have to click on the species uh, let me tell you what is that basically so whenever you take transport of diluted species if you go to the setting window you can see there is an option dependent variables if you expand this option you can see there is another option to define how many species you have for the time being for this particular work will be working with one species but you can actually choose as many species as possible suppose you want to choose three so once you click three and press enter you can see c c2 c3 so three species have been chosen but as i told i will be working with one only so i write one so it becomes only c so initial values you, you can see uh it is kept as zero i'll be keeping initial value zero that means initially there was only water there was no solute inside the water at t equal to zero what i do i keep certain concentration at the bottom and for that i have taken this concentration suppose i keep it as one mole per meter cube and now i have to keep zero at the top wall for that what i do i right click here and i choose one another uh, concentration i select this boundary and i keep it zero so mind it you have to check this option otherwise you will be getting an error okay now what you need to yeah you need to understand that this particular uh, wall is taken as axis symmetry so what is happening here there is an axis symmetry in this particular case and uh, we are basically solving for a part on a particular plane and when we revolve around it we basically will be basically getting a cylinder so if you just imagine you have a cylinder and if you are cutting from the middle so what you will be getting you will be getting a plane and we are not even solving for this particular plane we are solving half of it that will come as a rectangle so i'll show you when i'll revolve it when i plot the result so you'll understand what is the actual geometry so concentration is defined both the way so uh, one more thing mathematically you you can you can see this is a second order differential equation so where from the second order term coming because you have a divergence of j and again j is the first order derivative of c so when you put it here then it becomes a second order equation so this is basically d grad square c it will come like this so that's why you need at least two boundary conditions we have defined two boundary conditions so my problem is properly posed now what i can do i can go for meshing uh, let's go with the default mesh uh, this is not good so what i can do is instead of normal we can go for finer finer is also not good say extra fine okay for this particular simulation now i guess everything is defined i go i can go to the time dependent option now here is the story uh, by default always the time range is taken zero with an interval 0.1 up to one second so i do not have any idea how much time should i take for this particular simulation so what i can do is i can randomly put some value which is already here say one second so i click on compute here let's see what happens yeah the simulation is running you can see some concentration was kept at the bottom but diffusion do you feel any kind of diffusion has taken place is very sluggish because in one second it has just started running and you have stopped your simulation so what you have to do you can realize from here that in one second the concentration cannot travel much 
from the bottom to the top and the distance here is one centimeter now what you do you keep on increasing the time say I make it 10 let's see what happens again I click on compute so it will take some time to compute we can bear with this yeah you can see uh, let me change it to 10 second yeah still not enough diffusion so we should uh, I mean we, this is very simple simulation but in our real research problem the simulations the model could be complicated so if you don't in that case if you don't know the boundary exact boundary conditions if you don't know the time scales then it will be a problem so what I want to tell you is you should have a clear idea about the length scale time scale of the process about the appropriate boundary conditions if you are missing any one of them you may lead to a, either a wrong solution or a non-convergent solution in most of the cases the, if you define wrong boundary conditions wrong time scale you may lead to a non-convergent solution your simulation will not run so for that let us go into the physics of diffusion process and for that I have written something for you so let me try to explain you what exactly a diffusion is so as you can see uh, diffusion unsteady state diffusion can be defined by this differential equation where we what we do is uh, the time derivative partial derivative of concentration is equal to d times of grad square c so you can see this grad square is coming i have already explained it is divergence of the gradient of flux concentration flux and if you just if you just simplify it it will come d times grad, grad square c now what is this grad square or the laplacian this laplacian is nothing but dou do x dou square dou x square plus dou square dou y square plus dou square dou z square so in three dimension it is for our case let's just try to understand in terms of one dimension so what i do i seize these two coordinates and i just i just carry on with 1d in 1d we have only one space that is x now if you if you remember the discretization the forward discretization of this particular second order term then you know it comes like something like this c i plus 1 minus 2 c i plus c i minus 1 by 2 into dou x square there might not be 2 yeah okay uh, that is not an issue we are only bothering about the numerator so this is the discretization now you can rewrite it as before we rewrite it let me just try to explain you the let me take the pointer here so say so this is the ith point in the left hand side say so this point is the i minus 1 point and in the right hand side this is the i plus 1 point so if you just rearrange this particular expression you can write it as c i plus 1 minus c i so from this 2 ci we have taken 1 ci and put it here so we still have minus ci so we have taken minus within a within a parenthesis we have put the ci inside and when we put a parenthesis this plus will become minus because this minus and minus is making a plus sign here so by this way we have rearranged it now try to understand it physically at ith point the concentration say along this direction the concentration is increasing from bottom to the top if we move along this direction the concentration is going from low to high so at ith point it has certain concentration ci here at the i minus 1th point this is the concentration which is ci minus 1 
and at i plus 1 the concentration is c i plus 1 just to just visualize at i it is c i at i plus 1 it is c i plus 1 and at i minus 1 point it, the concentration is c i minus 1 now what does this term signify this term signifies the difference between c i plus 1 this is i plus 1 and i so here it is so this is the difference because you know i plus 1 the temperature the concentration is here at i it is here so this difference is nothing but c i plus 1 minus c i if you are not understanding the pause the video and slowly try to do it on your notebook then it will be more understandable okay so again what is this term c i minus c i minus 1 so this is c i this is c i minus 1 so this difference is c i minus c i minus 1 now what is that this minus this this basically means difference of differences that means this is a difference this is another difference and as a whole it is difference of differences so you can see this is higher than this so when this exists you have a transport with if you have a transport with respect to time your concentration will be changing now if this difference is, is very high the transport is faster if this difference is low the transport is low and the transport ceases when these two differences become zero and the only way to make this difference zero is equal temp equal concentration throughout so from here i can explain what is the physical significance of this gradient uh, grad square c or laplacian c it basically signifies the difference of differences if this difference of differences is higher you have a very faster diffusion process if not you have a slower diffusion process now here is not the end of the story you we have another term which is d is very important this is the proportionality constant which is called diffusivity and if this is high overall multiplication is high then you have a faster diffusion so d signifies the fast the speed of the diffusion and in this d we have the unit of d is meter square per second so d depends on both space and time rather we can say like this d has within d it has space and time both that's why it's a dynamic variable it's a dynamic parameter now from here from this d we can actually get the idea of the time scale of the process for that what we have done so d can be equated with a square by tau where a square is the a is the characteristic length and tau is the time scale of the process so from this equation if we just rearrange the tau becomes a square by d so where a is the characteristic length and d is the diffusivity so what is the characteristic length in our simulation we have taken a dimension of one centimeter and this is the dimension through which the concentration not the concentration the solute is moving and because of the solute movement the concentration is changing so in our process that is the concent that is the characteristic length so if i consider one centimeter that is 0 0.01 meter so 0 0.01 meter square by d for liquid it basically remains in the order of 10 to the power minus 9 so i have just taken 10 to the power minus 9 so the tau is coming as 1 e5 that means 1 after 5 zeros after 1 so this is the logical time scale of the process so if you are working in the domain of one second then you will not get an appropriate diffusion because you are not working in an appropriate time scale domain so from this idea let us try to put the concept of the physics in our simulation now what i have to do is i have to change this time scale say i will be changing it to 10 to the power 5 so 1 e 5 with an interval of say 
10 seconds. If I run the simulation now, I click on compute, it should work fine. My physics is saying it should work fine. So let's see what happens. The solution will take some time because we are working till 10 to the power 5 second. So what I can do is I can stop the simulation. I can uh, pause the video and come back again. Uh, let's wait because it's not taking too much of time. It will take another two seconds maybe. So this picture is very important. If you just note it down from here, what you learned, you learned about the physical significance of, of this Laplacian operator. You learned about the diffusivity. And you also learned about the speed of diffusion and the time scale of the process. All those things will be important if you are working with chemical species transport, chemical or reactive diffusive systems. We generally come across those kind of problems in uh, multiple research problems if you are working with diffusion transport, microfluidics, even reaction engineering. So those cons concepts are important and that's why I thought of making a video on this. So the simulation is almost done. Yeah, maybe few more seconds. I have not paused the video, rather I thought of bear with the time. Yeah, it's almost done. Now it's not almost, it is done actually. So now let us go to the final time stay, which is 1E5, which we calculated. Yeah, you can see. Now it is diffusing very fine. It has a continuous gradient. It has a continuous function basically. So what do you understood? The time scale, understanding about the time scale is important. Doing a diffusion problem in ComSol Multiphysics is very easy. Anybody can do that if you are instructed with few comments. But as a researcher, as an engineer, we need to learn about the physics of the problem. And in my channel, I am trying to work with those ideas to make the concepts clear, to learn something and to make you learn something. So if you are liking my videos, do subscribe to my channel. It will be helpful for me. I will get more motivation to upload such kind of videos. So today I stop here. Thank you.